Well, I, I like to say that Fred was craft beer's muse. You know, he was always there, and I always kind of always think of him as like the angel on everybody's shoulder, um, talking to everybody about what's going on in his just, you know, sweetest way. He was such a sweet man. And he would always, um, you know, say things like, oh, you know, I'm really looking forward to what you're trying next, or, um, you know, uh, being very positive with people about what they were doing and, um, and, and encouraging everybody so much. Like our godfather, you know, in the sense that Fred was, you know, home brewing before any of us were even a dream in our child's, you know, our parents' eyes. You know, I mean, he's been around forever and been home brewing through, uh, you know, gosh, after World War II and all that stuff. Uh, Fred really, I mean, he meant the world to to the craft beer scene here. He, if without Fred, there wouldn't have been the scene. It wouldn't have developed the way that it did. I mean, he was really the pioneer who had that. That, that vision to, you know, start writing about these beer styles when nobody else in North America really knew anything about them. And then he was really instrumental in helping folks like the Widmers get started. And, you know, they were brewing alt beer. And so Fred was able to, you know, kind of advise them on stylistic things with that. And then uh, just as other people started out, you know, Adam beer with, uh, you know, Hair of the Dog was something that, that Fred had done this research on and discovered this ancient style of, of, of very, very obscure beer that uh, kind of no one else was doing. Well, I think he brought a lot of inspiration to the industry as a whole and for beer drinkers in general. Uh, kind of was the first person to really think about beer uh, in styles in different uh, categories. Uh, before that, beer was beer. Uh, depending on where you lived, you got the beer that was made in that area. And unless you traveled around, you really didn't know about any other beers. And so he was really the first guy to write about uh, beers in the modern age, shall we say. I think the one thing that really uh, struck me about Fred was his passion. Um, the fact that he uh, delved so deep into the beer world uh, before it was popular. It kind of swimming against the grain, uh, doing your own thing, uh, was uh, fascinating to me. He was such a, a figure in the, in the craft beer community um, that it just seemed like he was always around and you, everybody kind of knew him without you know, really knowing him. But I, I remember when I finally met him was um, at the Spring Beer and Wine Fest one year. And he was um, standing around um, with a bunch of people congregating around him. And um, he was uh, you know, sniffing some beer and tasting some beer and people were talking to him and he was taking his notes and everything. And um, I was a long time uh, reporter wanting to kind of get out of that world and um, I saw what he was doing and I thought you know I could do that too. Well, Fred was kind of a goofball in the sense that he was um, always qu quick with a dry joke or uh, very kind of a dry guy you know I mean the jokes were always kind of you know not forced but they're always there but you always had to think about them after Fred laid on him. I remember at Great American Beer Festival one year I was judging and he's like, I must go to bed now, I'm judging beer in the morning, I must go drink my, my red wine. And I'm like, what's this red, red wine? He's like, yeah, I drink red wine before bed every night, don't you? And so I've never adopted that, but probably I should because he lived a, a quite a long life. So, You know, his smile really uh, was a huge uh, part of him. Uh, he always had a smile on his face. Uh, he always seemed to enjoy what he was doing. Uh, I talked to him quite a few times about how he could be so happy. Uh, and he told me he was just happy to be alive. Uh, it, it's a fantastic thing uh, that I always strive to maintain or to attain. One of these days I hope to be happy all the time. Um, it seems impossible. He'd be serious once in a while, but most of the time he was, he was very playful. He was always just uh, joking with you and ribbing you a little bit, but uh, always very nice and kind to everyone. And, uh, you know, that was something that it, just, it was really special to see Fred because he was always, you know, in a good mood and always trying to educate but also have fun. Well, he was a, a huge inspiration for me and a big mentor. And so I wanted to do something to say thank you to Fred. And so I thought if I made a beer called Fred that it would be an adequate uh, thank you. And so I talked to him, uh, brought him to the brewery one day and talked to him about what do you like in beer, Fred? What are your favorite components? And he liked hops foremost and uh, rye was the other thing that he, he liked. And so we made a, a hoppy rye beer, um, really strong Belgian influences, um, different than what was available at the time. 
A couple of years ago on my birthday, Fred decided to up and call me and leave me a message. And uh, he called us on our home phone, which is our landline. Um, yeah, we still have a landline. And um, he left it on our on our voicemail. And um, uh, it was just the cutest message. And he just sounded... He was he was in good health. He sounded good, and um, he just had that impish sound in his voice because he can be really honoring when he wants to be. And um, he just yeah, it was just the cutest thing. I decided to actually record it from my phone, and I uh, I have a copy of it on my on my cell phone now to keep with me forever, just because it was such a special Fred moment. Lisa, this is Fred. I just wanted to wish you a happy birthday. I can't imagine you're 51. You're too beautiful for that. Anyway, uh, have, a, have a nice birthday. And you don't have to call me back. Uh, but if you did, I'd answer. <laughs> Take care.